Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and normally we have a weekly wrap-up in this spot on the channel every Monday night, but due to some scheduling issues, I'm unable to do that video this week, but I am going to give you an overview of my top products of the year. There are 12 of them that I'm going to detail relatively quickly as we walk through this video, but link below is a playlist where you can find full reviews of all of them, uh, so you can get a lot more context for something that you might be interested in. My criteria here was that it was a product that I reviewed in the last 12 months, the year of 2017. There might be a couple more that come out in the course of the next couple of weeks before the year ends that we'll add as an addendum, but I'm pretty comfortable at this point looking back at the year and giving you my top picks. Some of these are things that I use every day. Some of them are just really good products that I can really very comfortably recommend. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is not a paid review. Nobody is sponsoring this video. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and no one is reviewing this content before it has been uploaded. I will let you know if there were products that were provided free of charge to the channel as we work our way through. So let's get into it and see what the top products are. So we're going to start off with the computers that I found this year that were the best of the best. And I have to, of course, begin with my favorite, the Xiaomi Air 13.3. I was able to buy this at a discount from GearBest.com, and it's now part of our workflow here on the channel because it's very thin and light, relatively powerful. It's got a Skylake i5 processor on board, but it also has a GPU. So it's really good for uh, having a nice portable computer that also has some graphical prowess for games and whatnot. You can check out my full review to see how it all comes together, but I thought this was an excellent piece of hardware that I think is very fairly priced for what you get. Really good stuff there. Uh, our next computer is a Chromebook. It's the Samsung Chromebook Plus, and you can see the full review linked down below in the master playlist. A uh, very lightweight, uh, decent performance out of it, really nice display on board, and it has a pen for doing uh, handwriting stuff as well as drawing and other things. It really uh, checked all the boxes for me, pretty reasonably priced, very powerful little Chromebook that also runs Android apps as well. I haven't seen anything better than that Chromebook all year, and that was something we reviewed pretty early in the year. I think there's a Pro Edition as well that's a little bit faster, but by and large, very good device for the money and something I can recommend if you're looking for a decent Chromebook. And one other Windows laptop this year that made the cut was the Lenovo Yoga 13. I really liked how thin and light it was. It had decent battery life, beautiful display, and it also had a Thunderbolt port that you're able to use to plug into external graphics cards, for example. So we plugged it into a GTX 1070 GPU in one of our videos earlier in the year, and it was able to uh, drive that GPU yet be disconnected and be very portable also. So good little laptop, very versatile, definitely worth taking a look at. Now this next item is not a computer, but it is a tablet that's pretty functional. It's the Amazon HD 10. It's a, a tablet that was selling for $99 during the holiday season. Normally it's 150 bucks with the Amazon ads that run when you lock up the device. And I really liked it for the price point. It's got a nice 1080p display. The performance was usable, decent enough. And it also responded to Alexa voice commands without having to push a button on it. So you could shout at it uh, like you would any other Alexa device. And it would, of course, respond with uh, whatever you're asking it to do. What's really cool, though, is that some of those Alexa responses will come up on the display, very similar to the much more expensive Echo Show might do. Yet this is a battery-powered device you can kind of set up anywhere in the house. So really flexible device. I was really quite pleased with it for the price point. And definitely check out the review link down below. So let's move on now to some accessories that you might want to plug into that new computer, we're going to start with the Akidio Node eGPU enclosure. This requires that the computer you're plugging into has a Thunderbolt 3 port on it, but if it does, you can then connect up desktop graphics cards to your laptop, and we did that uh, with that Yoga 7 2013. We found that the GTX 1070 was a great pairing for that computer. It really worked out uh, quite nicely in our testing, and it turned it into a decent gaming device when it was docked with that enclosure. The problem is that the enclosure is rather large, but I found it to be the most compatible that's out there. It has few compromises and uh, well worth the money. If you've got a nice laptop that uh, you really like, but you do wish it had better graphics capabilities, you can buy that, a GPU, and you're good to go with much better performance. You can see the full review and how it all works down below in the master playlist. Now, this next item is from Asus, and it's called the Zen Screen. I've got it right here. And what it is is a portable monitor that is powered by USB-C. But what's cool about this is that if you have a compatible USB-C computer that passes DisplayPort video, 
you only need one cable to get it to work. In fact, I've been using this quite a bit upstairs in my kitchen because I often do work up there at night. I like having two displays to uh, fit all the things that I'm looking at on screen at the same time, and I can set it up very easily. And then when the wife tells me to clean up all my junk, I can easily get it out of there as well. Really nice portable solution. I like that I don't have to lug around a power adapter for it. Just that single cable gets it going. And because my uh, Mac is able to pass the display port through that USB-C cable, there's no drivers required either. So really good performance. The only downside to it is that it is a little dim uh, given that it can't draw a lot of power out of that USB-C port, but it's good enough for me for what I do with it, and it's something that uh, really has become a part of my daily workflow. Now, this last item in the accessory category are the Apple AirPods. I'm quite pleased with these things. I just got them the other day. I was putting off buying them for a while just because I didn't think I would need them, but uh, now that I have them, I am using them constantly. Sometimes I just put one in my ear to use as a Bluetooth headset for a conference call, for example, uh, but most of the time I'm out walking the dog or running around the house, and I've got uh, both in. They have batteries inside that last about five hours, and then you can just pop them back into the little pillbox here to give them another boost of charge. Uh, this will recharge them fully, I think, four or five times. Then you can just plug this into your uh, USB charger to get uh, more juice into the uh, pillbox here. But overall, these things are just fantastic. They are so nicely integrated into Apple's ecosystem. I can very easily switch from my Mac to my iPhone to my iPad uh, just by tapping one little button to get there, so no repairing or anything like that. They also are Bluetooth compatible and work with non-Apple devices too. Uh, just a great product. Not much better sounding than the uh, regular earbud sound, but they don't fall out of my ears as easily. They really stay in uh, quite nicely, and I can't be more happy with these little AirPods. Now, our next category is gaming, and as you all know from my gray hair here, I am an aging gamer. I just turned 41, so a lot of my games are games that I enjoyed uh, back in the 80s, and probably the single best gaming product of the year that I looked at this year was the Analog NT Mini, which you can see right here. Uh, this is not cheap. It costs about $450. That's what I paid for it, but uh, what it does is it very accurately uh, represents the old games that you once played, including the NES, which is what it was initially designed to do. So you can plug in Nintendo games in here from uh, Europe or North America, or put in the Japanese Famicom games on the top slot there. And what it's using is something called the Field Programmable Gate Array Processor to replicate the old processors that were in the Nintendo. The timings are very accurate, and I found this thing really has very little lag and is the best experience I've had playing retro games on an HD television. It outputs to 1080p. But the guy that wrote the firmware for this released his own unofficial firmware that opened up a whole bunch of other consoles, including some of my favorites from the 80s, the Atari 2600, the ColecoVision, as well as a few other consoles as well, including the Sega Master System and Game Boy and Game Gear. And I've got most of my childhood on this eight gigabyte card now that I can load games up right from that card slot there. All in, uh, really one of the best products of the year that I really enjoy playing with. Uh, not cheap, but there is a new one coming out that starts at 189. Uh, similar architecture in that it has a field programmable gate array processor, but that one will support Super Nintendo games as well. I don't know if it's going to have the unofficial firmware that this one has, but my advice would be hold off until February when that new one comes out called the Super NT Mini. I'll have a full review of that in February when it comes out, and hopefully it will have the same functionality that uh, this one does as well. But either way, uh, definitely for me, one of the best gaming products of the year. Now this next product also speaks to me as an aging gamer, and that of course is the Nintendo Switch. I bought this back in March right when it came out. In fact, I think this was one of the first products that I reviewed here as a uh, full-time content creator, and I could not be happier with this thing. I really uh, like the fact that I can just take it out of its dock and play anywhere in the house. Oftentimes, I'm not able to uh, spend as much time in front of the big TV in the living room as I would like, but if I do want to play a game for five or ten minutes, I can uh, grab and go and uh, play wherever I am, and that's been something that has really uh, given this console a lot of use in the house as it's so compatible with my lifestyle at the moment, and I got through the entire Zelda game with it. I also just finished up the Mario game too. I've got a, a little more bonus level stuff to do with it, but uh, by and large, this has been a fantastic purchase. I'm really happy with it, and I'm eager to see what kind of software comes out for it in the near future. It also goes to show you that the quality of the software 
often matters more than the uh, horsepower of the hardware. So even though this is not driving all these fancy 4K graphics, it is incredibly entertaining, and I've been uh, playing this a lot more than I have my Xbox One. In fact, I think I've uh, used this more in its first month or so than I used the Xbox One in over a year. It's really a big difference here, primarily because it is so convenient to pick up and play, especially for an older guy like me. And the final category I want to cover this year is production gear, video production gear, because uh, we're at an era now where you can actually produce some really decent video uh, for not a lot of money, and there's always these new things that are coming out that make it a little bit easier along the way. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is a uh, smartphone mount, actually, and this is a really nice one. This is called the Glyph, and they've had a few variations of it. Uh, this one I think they're calling the new Glyph, and I reviewed this one. It's a pretty short review that you can check out, but uh, basically it works with just about any phone. It really holds the phone in quite securely, as you can see here, and there are a number of mounting points on it for a tripod, but you could also rig up lights and some other stuff with it, too. Really flexible and uh, really the nicest uh, little uh, grip I have found out there for a smartphone. I use this thing every day. In fact, the extras channel happens because of this little mount and how easy it is to get my phone in and out of it. It's called the Glyph. Find the review down below in the master playlist. Now, one of the things that made this channel possible was a very low-cost multi-camera video switcher. It was called the Blackmagic ATEM, and I'm always looking for similar products to recommend to people. And this next one really surprised me. It's called the Sling Studio, and it is a $1,000 product. And what it lets you do is not only plug in a camera via HDMI to it, but you can also bring in smartphones as remote cameras over Wi-Fi, and it works exceptionally well. And the best uh, use I could think of it would be maybe for a high school basketball game or something where you can have uh, one camera locked down kind of covering the action, but you could send out people just with their phones onto the floor to get closer shots to make it look more professional. And for a thousand bucks out of the box, I think it's a pretty good deal given that it also handles all the recording and all of the live streaming at the same time. Really pretty remarkable little product that, again, surprised me because it actually worked better than I thought it would. You can check out the full review link down below to see exactly what it can and can't do. And the last product in this category and for the top 12 of the year is this one called the Kinect Spark from New Tech. And this is the company that also makes my current video switcher called the TriCaster. And as you all know, I do these videos from my house. I've got an office in my basement that I work out of, but sometimes I'm reviewing something that might be on the other side of the room or perhaps maybe in a different part of the house. And before I wasn't really able to uh, do much with that other than uh, record the video and then kind of splice it in later while I'm editing. But I like to do as much as I can in real time, and that is where uh, this device really comes in handy. So what I can do here is plug my uh, cameras or whatever into the input here and then either connect up via Wi-Fi or through its Ethernet jack here to my network, and then I can bring in any remote source on my network into my TriCaster Live and include it like any other camera. So when we've done some of those uh, door locks, for example, the Yale lock we looked at the other day, the uh, lock is upstairs, but I was able to take this out over Wi-Fi, plug a camera into it, and control it from down here and have it just integrated into my production. What's cool about this, though, is that it works with NDI, which is a, a relatively open standard that a lot of software is now adopting, including OBS, the open broadcasting software that's free and open source. Uh, you can buy this. I think it's about 500 bucks or so, and you can then use this the same way I'm using it to bring in a video over your network live into your production switcher. Uh, this has a lot of great uses. In fact, if you're on a college campus, for example, and you're trying to bring in video from a remote classroom, as long as you're on the same network, you can have this uh, beam directly into your uh, central control room without having to run extra cabling out. Just uses IP, and the bandwidth requirements on this one are pretty minimal. Really good product, and uh, really using this quite a bit here on the channel. You never know the difference when I'm using it or not, but it's being used on uh, probably at least every video per week that uh, requires it. So really good stuff, and it's made my production workflow a lot easier. So that's the top 12 of the year. I'd love to hear what you thought down below in the comments section. Again, I've got full reviews of all this stuff uh, linked in the master playlist, along with one of my kits that you can click on to find uh, places to buy all this stuff too. I may have missed something in going through the list that you think should be included, so do let me know uh, down in the comments below, and I'll see if about uh, maybe doing doing some addendums to this before the year is completely out. I'm also always interested in hearing what some of your top products of the year were, maybe something I haven't reviewed yet that maybe I should. So let me know as well, and we'll see what happens there. So in the meantime, hope you all had a, a great week here. I'll be back with a weekly wrap-up next week. I've got more content planned for the rest of this week, so don't worry, but uh, we'll get back on our normal schedule uh, once my schedule gets back into order again. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. 
including Gold Level supporters, the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lan.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lan.tv slash s.